to come to this conference, um, Brian Adams asked me to speak about a specific project, and so I'm going to follow that request, uh, keep the mandate. The first thing that I need to say to you so that you understand the first uh, screen is that CEROS stands for the study of the economic impact of religion on society, and it's a particular interfaith initiative that it's about two years old. But before I do that, I, well, I'm going to talk about freedom in the world economically because I said something about that at this conference last year in, in the Gold Coast in Australia, and I just want to show you the updated slides that I used there. Uh, freedom House every year produce a map which shows freedom in the world. Now, you can't read the key because it's too small, but you can get the gist of which countries are the freest by the lightest colour. And it deteriorates as it goes to a yellowish colour and then to a bluish colour in terms of their review of world freedom. Last year I did this. I changed the heading on the slide and ask you what changes. And then I flick the slide again and I ask you what changes. The point is just to make the point that there is a correlation between religious freedom and freedom in general. As someone else said today, um, religious freedom is a compound with other freedoms. They come in bundles and that economic prosperity, as Brian Grimm might say, comes with them. Now, although the Australian Constitution opens with these words, whereas the people of New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, Queensland and Tasmania, humbly relying on the blessings of Almighty God, have agreed to unite in one indissoluble commonwealth, even though that's the way it begins, section 16 of the Constitution denies that commonwealth the power to establish a national church. Many commentators have considered that Australia was thus constituted as a secular state, though there are some others who are not satisfied with the degree of separation. Some of them are also calling for the Rawlsian exclusion of religious voices from all discussion in the public square. Others complain that religion is the primary source of all conflict within society, including Australia. Others still suggest that tax exemptions which favour religious organisations in Australia are a source of fiscal drag which stifles economic growth. Because the contrary voices are increasing and are felt by religious organisations to threaten the future of all organised religion in Australia, the LDS Church back in 2013 uh, commissioned Deloitte Access Economics. Well, there you go, I've got a slide, I didn't put that one up. The number one cause of war. <laughs> and economic exemptions slow the economy, that's the idea. So the, the, the LDS Church commissioned Deloitte Access Economics to conduct a scoping study into the impact, the economic impact of religious activities in Australia. A literary review, a literature review was provided by Dr. Ram Kanan. You've seen him walking around here and he's in the audience. Thank you, Ram. And that formed the foundation, Deloitte said, for the initial scoping analysis. While that literature review confirmed that the link between religious activity and people's attitudes and behaviours was generally well established in international sociological literature, the majority of the studies were US-centric and not specifically helpful in the Australian context. When the, study, when the scoping study was completed in July 2013, it was shared with a large group of Australian religious leaders. I think you came out for that, Ram, did you not? Oh, you didn't. I knew I've seen you elsewhere, though. The study said that detailed research would be required to establish quantitative causal links between religious activity and social outcomes in Australia. If 
robust qualitative, quantitative links between religious activity and social outcomes were established by research, Deloitte said they could quantify the fiscal saving to government that flowed from various kinds of religious activity. Following the July 2013 meeting, an ecumenical board was formed to determine what studies should be undertaken and to raise the necessary funds. The board is a truly eclectic gathering of Australian religious leaders. The chair is Bishop Robert Forsyth, the Anglican Bishop of South Sydney. The vice chairman, Elder Geoffrey Cummings, is a member of the 70 of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Other board members include the Reverend Keith Garner, the Chief Executive Officer of the Wesley Mission in Australia, the Reverend Terence Corkin, who is the General Secretary of the Uniting Church in Australia, James Standish, the Pacific Communications Director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I don't have all their photos, I'm sorry. Dr. Michael Casey, the former secretary to His Eminence, Cardinal George Powell, and now he is based at the Australian Catholic University, and Julian Lisa, who represents the Executive Council of Australian Jewry. Other faith traditions involved in the project include the Nantian Buddhist Temple, the Islamic Council of New South Wales, the Australian Baha'i Community, and the Hillsong Church. As I speak, the first of three planned studies is underway. Deloitte has settled an individual giving survey questionnaire, which was prepared by the Christian Research Association in Melbourne, to establish the extent and value of individual volunteerism in Australia. 30,000 surveys are in the process of being distributed, and the board's consultants advise an expected return of 7,500 completed questionnaire. questionnaires will provide sociological data with less than 5% margin for error. Deloitte will review the data and provide a report that will then be released nationally through the various Australian state and federal parliaments. Deloitte's report is expected to be released in 2016 when the nation has awoken from its summer holiday. But if that was all I told you about the CEROS project, I think I would be telling you less than 25% of the story. In my view, the most significant part of what we are doing may be embedded in the interfaith cooperation that has already been involved. That cooperation has the potential to ensure organised religion continues to be a mediating institution in liberal Western democracy despite assaults that they feel coming from militant secularism. The point is to build upon the many things that religions do have in common, to build bridges of understanding at a personal level and to prove the good that religion does in society with data and econometric analysis that is unanswerable. In our CEROS board meetings, we do not discuss the points of difference we, that we know we all have. We joke about them. <laughs> we are all independently certain of the value of our goals. We all know that doing good is of is value in this life and in the world to come. But we are looking for innovative ways to tell the world that we are making a difference, such a difference that no one in their right mind would want to lose it. We care for the poor and needy, including the aged, and we do it economically because our motivation is the love in our hearts, born of our separate but common religious convictions. We work hard because we believe that making a better world for our children and grandchildren is a worthwhile objective. None of us ask the what's in it for me question. And when we work together, there is peace and the opportunity for increased understanding followed by respect. We don't stop at condescending tolerance. Our vision is to reach out and show the world what can be accomplished by good people working together, even if they know that 
they can't yet agree on all their ideology. For me, the CROS story is not just a plan to defend organised religion in Australia against the secular forces, which would insist we talk only about religion in private space, and which would also take away the incentives that encourage our philanthropy. CROS is a template for cooperative interfaith engagement. It is an experiment by good men and women who want to work together for the greater good and respect others enough to know them and to work beside them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention here today.